Hi, my name is Shijaz Abdullah. I lead solution architecture for Amazon Web Services, AWS, in the Middle East and North Africa. I've been with AWS for more than three years and I've been in the industry for more than 16 years. Throughout my experience, I've worked with customers of all sizes and all verticals deploy solutions on the cloud. Today, I'm going to talk to you about cloud architecture. If your team is building a system on the cloud, how do you look at that system and say, this is well architected? And that's exactly where the AWS well architected framework comes in. The well architected framework is a mechanism to ensure that you're following and adhering to the best practices. So why AWS well architected framework? There's four reasons. Uh, firstly, it helps you build faster. Secondly, it helps you lower or mitigate your risks. Thirdly, uh, it helps you make informed decisions when it comes to your architecture. And lastly, um, you learn a lot about AWS best practices from years of experience that we have helping customers build scalable, highly performant and reliable solutions on the cloud. So what is the well-architected framework? It consists of three things. Firstly, it's got uh, pillars. There are five pillars in the well-architected framework. Uh, and there's also the design principles. There are general design principles as well as specific design principles for each of those five pillars. And lastly, there's questions. And what we mean by questions is these are questions that you need to ask yourself uh, about your architecture to ensure that you've considered all the best practices when it comes to those pillars. So when it comes to the general design principles, these are um, in general, you know, design principles that you would look at when you build architecture. Um, things like, for example, you need to stop guessing capacity, right? On the cloud, you have access to all these resources. You don't really need to estimate accurately what you might need. So any, any estimation that you do is a, is a good guess. Um, but the thing with the cloud is that because you have all these resources available to you and it is super scalable, you do not have to really uh, guess uh, a capacity. You can start with what you need and provision as you go. Another design principle, another general design principle that we have on the cloud is that you can test at production scale. Because you pay for what you use and what you need on the cloud, you can test with the scale and with the capacity that you would need on a production system and then immediately roll back or, or scale back to, to, what, uh, you know, to what you really need at the, at the moment. So it helps you do more reliable performance testing on the cloud. There are many other general design principles, but let's also talk about some of the, um, the more specific uh, design principles when it comes to uh, the different pillars of the well-architected framework. So what are the five pillars when it comes to the well-architected framework? They are operational excellence, security, reliability, performance efficiency, and cost optimization. Now, if I look into each of these um, pillars, there are design principles associated with each and every one of them. So if we were to look at the operational excellence pillar, some of the questions that we would ask would be around infrastructure as a code. That's a very good design principle. Uh, instead of having to build everything by hand each time, you would want to use infrastructure as code. This means using runbooks, using cloud formation templates, um, using playbooks uh, to design uh, and to build your environment. Another design principle when it comes to operational excellence is to make small, frequent, reversible changes. Why frequent and small is because they're easier to implement, they're easier to roll back if things go wrong. And um, it's also easier to ship out small changes quickly than to have big changes uh, that would be more complex for you to deploy. When it comes to the security um, pillar of the well-architected framework, some of the design principles are around, let's say, traceability. Uh, that's about simply being having the ability to audit what's going on in your environment. Logging is another thing that helps you with traceability. Another design principle that I can, that I can think of is um, encryption or protecting data, both at rest and in transit. If we move to the third pillar, the reliability pillar, two examples of design principles there are, are testing recovery, right? Uh, if I ask an organization, do you have a backup uh, policy or a disaster recovery site? The answer would be yes, but have you tested it? And that, that's really important because if you haven't tested it, 
you, you're as good as not having a, a disaster recovery or a backup um, policy or a mechanism. Uh, auto recovery from failure is another design principle to consider when it comes to reliability. When we move to the performance efficiency pillar, two things that we can talk about. Uh, one of them is uh, going global in minutes. Thanks to the um, global reach that AWS provides with our regions around the world, um, customers have seen that it is much more easier for them to deploy at scale and go global in minutes, leveraging all those regions that we have across the world. Uh, another principle, design principle around performance efficiency is to simply use serverless architectures. Uh, instead of managing clunky servers and you know having to uh, manage them, having to patch them, uh, it's much more easier to use serverless architecture uh, where the operational overhead is lesser, the cost is driven low, and you can actually focus on your application. Uh, the last pillar is cost optimization. It's really important because it helps you save costs when you use the cloud. And two design principles that I can talk about, one of them is to use a consumption model, right? You pay for exactly what you use instead of making upfront investments, and that's possible because of the cloud. You pay by the minute or you pay by the gigabyte, depending upon the unit of use or the, the billing uh, meters, you're paying for exactly what you use on the cloud, and that's a good mechanism to save costs. And lastly, the intent of the review, um, of, a, of doing a well-architected review, is not to do an audit. It's not to, not to see who's not done, the, not done their job. More so, it is a way of ensuring that you have considered all the possibilities to ensure that you have the best possible um, architecture uh, when it comes to those five pillars. Another thing to also remember uh, is that the well-architected review is not a one-time check. Uh, the earlier do you do it, the better. Uh, I usually recommend that customers do their well-architected review um, well ahead when they're designing the solution, not just before going live. It is good to do a well-architected review just before going live because it ensures operational readiness and that's, that's okay. Uh, but it's also equally important that you keep revisiting the well-architected framework and you keep doing those well-architected reviews from time to time as part of your operations. Uh, you can learn more about the AWS well-architected framework by going to aws.amazon.com slash well-architected. There's a lot of content over there, white papers. Uh, there's also the well-architected tool which you can use to ask questions about your architecture to ensure that you have considered all the different um, design principles when you have um, built your architecture, that you have baked them into the architecture and the design that you're building uh, for your application on the cloud. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.